Hey everybody, it's Jenny Civi. In the last video on air handlers, I talked about several topics that I said I would follow up on in future videos. So let's start that today with blow through versus draw through fan arrangements. If you remember from the last video, air handlers can either have the fan before or after the coils. In a blow through arrangement, the fan is before the coils and it blows the air through the coils. In a draw through arrangement, the fan is after the coils and the air is drawn through the coils by the fan. So let me draw this out. Let's draw a casing up here. and we'll draw the fan at the beginning for our blow through arrangement. And then we'll put our water coil in here after the fan. Now let's draw our draw through arrangement starting with the casing again. In this case the water coil will go first and we'll draw our fan on this end. So let's make a little more room and look at the airflow going through the fan itself. So let's just draw a fan down here. And then separate the discharge from the inlet side. So air coming into the inlet is going to be pretty evenly distributed. But air coming out the discharge is going to come out at the top here. So if I draw a casing in so you could look at it as if it were inside an air handler, you can see that the air coming out the discharge is going to come out at top and kind of expand as it moves through the unit. So you can see that the flow on the inlet side is much more even when compared to the flow on the discharge side of the fan, at least right at where the fan is discharging. So if your water coil is located on the inlet side in a draw through application right here, it has much more even airflow. In a blow through application, to get to the point where you have even airflow, you'll need to put more distance between the discharge of the fan and the water coil. You could also put a diffusion plate in between the fan and the coil to diffuse or spread out the airflow, but this will add pressure drop to the unit and pressure drop equals energy, so this is not necessarily a better option. Now if you put the coil here, close to the fan discharge, You could have too much face velocity at the area where the air hits the water coil and this is going to reduce the capacity of the coil because you're not using the air around the outside. It will also increase pressure drop and this high velocity could actually cause something called moisture or condensate blow off or carry over. This is when water droplets are blown off the coil and into the airstream and you don't want water droplets in your airstream or in the ductwork. So you should limit your cooling coil face velocities to about 500 feet per minute plus or minus 50 feet per minute and have good airflow over the coils. Let's make a little more room again. For these reasons, draw through is the most common arrangement for air handlers, but there are other things to consider as well, like the heat of the motor. In a draw through arrangement, the heat of the motor will be added to the airstream just as it enters the ductwork. In a blow through arrangement, the heat of the motor will be added to the mixed air that's coming into the cooling coils. This can add a couple degrees to the airstream. There is an equation in ASHRAE handbook, HVAC systems and equipment, which tells you the temp rise across the fan. It's in chapter 21.7. And the equation is delta T equals delta P times CP divided by rho times CP times J times zeta, where the temperature is delta T, 
the pressure, delta P. Cp is the conversion factor. Rho is the density of air. Little cp is the specific heat. J is the mechanical equivalent heat. And N is the efficiency of the motor and the fan in this case, because we have both the motor and the fan in the airstream. So let's look at this calculation. Let's just say we have a total static pressure of 5 inches. The conversion factor is 5.193. Rho for 55 degree air is 0 0.7704. The specific heat is 0.24. And the mechanical equivalent heat is 778.2. And let's say that our motor and blower efficiency is 68%. So that comes up to a temp rise from the motor of about 2.7 degrees F. So you are going to need to compensate for this motor heat in your system somehow. If you have a blow through arrangement, then this extra heat will be entering the coils. So you'll have a higher entering air temperature into the coils. In a draw-through arrangement, you will have to lower your leaving air temperature from your coils because the heat will be added after the coil. So that kind of looks like this. Let's say that we have a 76 degree uh, mixed air temperature going into your coils. So your entering air on a blow-through would be the 76 plus the 2.7 from the motor which would give you 78.7 degrees, and a leaving air temperature of 55, which is what you want to send to the space. For the draw-through application, you'll have an entering air temperature of the same 76 degrees, but your leaving air temperature is going to need to be the 55 minus 2.7 degrees to compensate for it, so 52.3 degrees. Which of these scenarios is best will depend on more than just the 23.7 degree difference between the two, because you have to take into account humidity, and that will add a latent component that I won't get into right now. But that's the difference between blow-through and draw-through configurations. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and thanks for watching.